So I've got a question for y'all. After watching some videos and reading some stuff on the internet, I've been thinking about liberal Christianity. Although I suppose it could be liberal religion in general, but I'm just going to focus on liberal Christianity in this video for the sake of brevity. Yay. Anyway, so my question is, is there a point at which people become so disconnected from the traditional tenets and values espoused by their religion that they can no longer be considered an adherent to that religion? Let me give you an example. You might have seen a video bouncing around YouTube of an interview with a guy called John Shelby Spong. Spong. That's an interesting name. Whatever, let's move on. This is the introduction to his Wikipedia entry. John Shelby Spong is a retired American bishop of the Episcopal Church Diocese of Newark. He is a liberal Christian theologian, religion commentator, and author. He calls for a fundamental rethinking of Christian belief away from theism and such doctrines and practices as prayer. Now I know what you're thinking, but hold that thought. Let's watch some snippets of this video first. Now I'm only going to include the best bits, the highlights of this video of him, again for the sake of brevity. I think I'm using the bits that prove my point the best. However, if you don't trust me and my ability to cut up interviews with people, there is a link in the description to the video I'm talking about. You can go and watch that now. It's not that long. But here are some of the best bits of this particular interview. I don't think hell exists. I happen to believe in life after death, but I don't think it's got a thing to do with reward and punishment. Religion is always in the control business. Uh, and that's something people don't really understand. It's, it's in the guilt-producing control business. And if you have heaven as a place where you're rewarded for your goodness and hell as a place where you're punished for your evil, then you sort of have control of the population. And so they create this fiery place. People don't need to be born again. They need to grow up. They need to accept their responsibility for themselves and the world. What do you make of the theology which uh, is pretty quite prominent these days in America which is that there is one guaranteed way not to go to hell and that is to accept Jesus as your personal savior yeah you know, I grew up in that tradition uh, every church I know claims that we are the true church they, and they have some ultimate authority we have the infallible Pope we have the errant Bible the idea that the truth of God can be bound in any human system by any human creed by any human book is almost beyond imagination for me. Again, hold that thought, I have more things to read to you about this guy, about Mr. Spong. He wrote a book called A New Christianity for a New World. Why traditional faith is dying and how a new faith is being born. Liberal Christianity indeed. It includes 12 points for reform. I'm not going to read them all out, I'm just going to read the ones that I think illustrate my point the best. Again though, if you don't trust me, I'll link in the description to the 12 points. But anyway, here we go. Number one, theism as a way of defining God is dead. Pfft, theism? Nah, we don't need that for Christianity. That whole monotheistic God thing? Meh. Number three, the biblical story of the perfect and finished creation from which human beings fell into sin is pre-Darwinian mythology and post-Darwinian nonsense. <laughs> Okay. Number nine, there is no external objective revealed standard written in scripture or on tablets of stone that will govern our ethical behavior for all time. I love that one in particular because not only does it say that the Ten Commandments is a load of crap, it seems to mock it as well. Number twelve, all human beings bear God's image and must be respected for what each person is. Therefore, no external description of one's being, whether based on race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation, can properly be used as a basis for either rejection or discrimination. Sounds like my kind of Christianity. So basically this guy does put the liberal in liberal Christianity. But has he gone too far? This guy is not only accepting facts like evolution and how impossible it is for there to be a virgin birth, but he's also saying that things like theism, heaven and hell, prayer, objective morality, all these things aren't really that Christian. Can he do that and still be a Christian? This is a question I want to know. Because I don't know how many times I've argued with people who say that moderate Muslims don't exist. Because the Muslims that don't run around blowing themselves up, i.e. most of them, aren't really Muslims. So go the no true Scotsman fallacy. So I don't want to say this guy isn't a Christian, but at the same time he's rejecting some of the things that at least I feel are fundamental to being a Christian. Another example, I have a friend who I know through my brother who identifies as Catholic. She went to a Catholic school, she goes to church, she believes in God, all that spiel. But on the other hand, as far as I know, she's all for gay rights, she doesn't think that me and Mike are headed for hell for being atheists, and she doesn't even like the Pope. She thinks he's a dickhead, which he is. Now I don't think she's quite as liberal in her ideas as this John Shelby Spong guy, but is there a line? Is there a line that some people cross that renders them so far removed from their religion that you can no longer comfortably call them an adherent of that religion? Can you be too liberal, too kooky, and dare I say it, too skeptical to be religious. Hmm. 